Welcome back to Life With Us TV. It's your girl, Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. All right, we know you're about to go on your very first carnival cruise. You're excited. You're overwhelmed. Guess what? We felt the same way on yep. our very first carnival cruise. In today's video, we're going to give you 21 mistakes to avoid on your very first carnival cruise so that you can go into this thing prepared and knowing exactly what to do. Y'all ready to get into it? Let's go. First mistake you must avoid as a first time carnival cruiser is do not overspend in the pictures. That's easy Let to me do. tell you, on our first um, carnival cruise, we was all nice for an elegant night, went and we took them good. pictures. We was <laughs> clueless about the cost. <laughs> So we went up there and looked at the pictures, and every picture looked Look fabulous, great. man. <laughs> man, we spent about over $400 in pictures. Yep. And let me tell you, neither one of them pictures has ever hit a wall on this made house. A wall. <laughs> so to avoid that mistake, Carnival actually has a picture package that's actually $99, mm -hmm. and you get five pictures. I think that's good enough for you so you won't have to break the bank on yes. pictures. especially you on task. Yeah, especially with a person who love to have pictures. Also, don't make this mistake with pictures that if you buy the downloaded version, please download it. We've had yes. several clients that have um, booked through our agency, went on their trip, bought pictures of downloads and forgot to download them. You're right. And we had to contact Carnival and it took months for them to dig through the archives to find those photos. So please download them immediately after you purchase right. them and check your photos in your phone to make sure they're there. The second mistake to avoid on your very first Carnival cruise is not knowing the total cost of your cruise. Yeah. Let me explain. So when you go ahead and book your cruise and you say, oh, you know, $1,200 for two people in a balcony, that's not bad. That is not the total cost. You have to account for, if you want to do excursions, you have to account for it, whether or not you want to book the internet package. You have to account for it if you're flying into destination that flight costs pre-cruise hotel. What I am saying in a nutshell is look at the overall picture and know what that total cost is and then budget in what you're going to spend. Like we're going to spend money on, right. on vacation and see if this is still a good deal for you. Yeah, because on our first cruise, we got on the ship and we was looking around like, oh, we want that. We want to do this and we want yep. to do that. That we thought it was included in the price and come to find out that it won't include it in the price. No. And uh, we end up uh, putting it on, on a credit, credit card. Because we didn't have it like yeah, that back yeah, then. because we didn't have it like that. We was broke, but we just wanted <laughs> to get on that first goddamn cruise. So, yes, please know that total cost. The third mistake you want to avoid as a first-time Carnival cruiser, you need to know that the gratuities will be charged on your sign and sale the night before you get off the cruise. And if you don't want that to happen, you have to go to guest services and have that charge removed. So we want to let you know that so that won't be a surprise for right. you. But if you want to avoid that from happening, you have the option to prepay Pre -pay for gratuities before you get on the ship. The fourth mistake to avoid when going on your very first Carnival cruise is not understanding the dining options available to you that are complimentary. Yeah. Our very first Carnival cruise, we went into it not knowing anything. So we ate at the buffet. Yep, a lot. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> not knowing that they had CD brunch, which was included in your cruise fare. There were quick eats like Guy's um, Burgers, Guy's Pig and Anchor, Blue, um, blue iguana, iguana. Yep. like there are so many eateries that are included in your cost but if you're a person like me that didn't research it i didn't know that they were available so people we can stop just eating at the buffet right <laughs> <laughs> and just know we always recommend for breakfast is go to sea day brunch and what sea day brunch is sea day brunch actually happens on sea days so don't go to that day on buffet on sea days. Go to the down. main dining room and sit down and get you some breakfast cooked from scratch. Well, let's cook from something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fifth mistake that you want to avoid as a first-time carnival cruiser is having your proper documents mm. when you arrive to yep. port to board the ship. 
We have heard countless stories of people showing up not having their documents mm -hmm. and having to be turned away. So we don't yep. want you to spend thousands of dollars on your cruise to only fly across the world to get there <laughs> and they tell you, oh, uh, nope. you can't board it because not you today. don't have your documents. So the documents that you want to make sure that you have is first, you want to have your passport. If you don't have a passport, you want to make sure that you have your ID and you want to have your birth certificate. Now, when right. it comes down to the birth certificate, we're not talking about the one that your mama <laughs> them put your feet on the back of it when you was coming up. So <laughs> you want to have the one that comes directly from DMV or that vital, vital statistics. statistics. Also, you want to make sure that you have your luggage tags. Mm -hmm. Now, your luggage tags will be printed off during the check-in process um, when you get closer to your cruise. And your boarding documentation. And along with that, make sure you bring your booking confirmation, all of that good stuff, because you're going to need that to get it on board too. The sixth mistake to avoid on your very first Carnival cruise is picking the right ship. Stop. I know. You're looking at me weird. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> what I mean by that is, if you're on my YouTube channel right now, you have probably went around the internet looking at different people's vlogs, seeing the ship that they're on, getting excited and all of that. If you want to experience what they experience, right. then you need to book the ship that they were on. For instance, a lot of people have seen our Carnival Celebration um, vlogs, got excited about their cruise, and then booked Carnival Paradise. Right. It is two totally different experiences that you're going to have because you have the newest ship with the latest technology, and then you have one of the oldest ships that are basic bare bones when it comes to how Carnival builds their cruise ships. We're going to need you to pick the ship that enticed you to want to cruise in the first place so that you can get the maximum experience out of what it is that you want to have on vacation. The seventh mistake you want to avoid as a first-time Carnival cruiser is picking the proper cabin in the proper category. Let me explain mm -hmm. what that means. A lot of people end up booking cabins that they do not want, hoping to be able to get an upgrade. Right. Let me tell you, we've been on several Carnival cruises in the last couple of years, and we've only able to get an upgrade one time, mm -hmm. just yes. once. So we always say, if you want a balcony cabin, book, book a balcony, balcony cabin. cabin. Do not sit around and wait for an upgrade because you're going to be highly disappointed that's it also you want to make sure that you pick the correct location on the ship as well mm -hmm. because if you have vertigo issues you do not want to be in the front of the ship or the back of the ship mm -hmm. you want to make sure that you're somewhere in the middle because there's a lot of rocking in the front a lot of rocking in the back and we don't mm -hmm. want you to have that because vertigo is not a good thing we know because no, no. my wife actually has vertigo issues so she makes sure she always books us in the center of the ship yep the eighth mistake that you should avoid when booking your very first Carnival cruise is not using a travel agent. I am not saying this because I myself am a travel agent. I am saying this because one, the proof is in the pudding. One, you're on this video trying to learn what it is that you don't know about going on your very first Carnival cruise. Right. If you had a travel agent, they can eliminate the learning curve and hold your hand, book your best options, get you the best deals and be able to just get that stress up off of you and get you on to a successful vacation. What I mean also by using a travel agent is travel agents have have the knowledge to be able to direct you in a way that, hey, maybe this is not the best option for what it is you're telling me you want to experience. Or, hey, you're saying that you're worried about, you know, the rocking of the ship. Well, if you want to go in September, more than likely you're going to experience a whole lot of that. So just because that's hurricane season, because that is hurricane season. Nope. So just go with an advisor that is able to guide you throughout the process. Mistake number nine that you want to avoid as a first time Carnival Cruiser, because we did this one for show on our mm. first trip. We winged it. Winged it yep. horribly at that. Yep. <laughs> we didn't plan anything. Nope. We didn't have no excursion. We didn't plan <laughs> no dining options. I mean, we just said we, we just get, went. We just went. And that is a huge mistake because it's going to produce stress in your life like you have never experienced before. Because when you get on that big, huge ship 
and you don't know which way to go, what to do, it's going to get on your nerves. So please plan. Mm -hmm. While you're going through our videos or going through somebody else's yeah. videos, get ideas of stuff and have stuff in mind that you want to do when you get on that cruise because winging it cost us a whole lot of money. By the time we got <laughs> by the time we got off the cruise, we had like over a thousand dollars that we had on put our credit card. On our credit card that we had to continue to pay when we got off the cruise. And That's mind you, like I said earlier, we was broke. <laughs> so just imagine being broke and coming back with with a, yeah. with a bill. Right. <laughs> and a bad experience. Yes. <laughs> so don't wing it. Please plan your trip and know everything you want to do before you go. Yeah. The tenth mistake to avoid on your very first Carnival cruise and any cruise. It could be a 40th cruise. It could be a 100th cruise. I digress. Is avoiding not paying for travel, travel insurance. insurance. <laughs> I know. A lot of you all was like, it's an extra cost. I'm just going to go ahead and... Mm. Here is the question that I want to ask you. If something were to happen and you could not go on that cruise, could you swallow what you pay for that cruise and walk away and it doesn't bother you? Right. If something were to happen on the cruise and you had to be medically evaluate, uh, evacuated off of that ship and that can come at $30,000 to $50,000, can you swallow that and walk away from that cost? If the answer is no, then you need to look into getting travel insurance. Travel insurance is not that expensive. Make sure that you know which travel insurance policies that you are um, paying for so that you know what the coverage options are, what right. is covered. Also, some credit cards do um, cover some of the trips if you pay for that trip solely and fully on that card. So you can't make a $100 payment using one card and think that they're going to cover that entire cruise because the credit card has those benefits. No, just know what those benefits are on the card if that's what you're going to use. Right. But do not avoid travel insurance. I'll give you a couple examples because I'm a travel agent and I book a lot of cruises. And in this past year, I have had to go to bat yep. um, against companies, major corporations to try to retrieve money that, the client was not owed because both instances, the clients declined travel insurance, but they had medical emergencies yeah. under six, um, under within 30 days of the their truth. sailing. Yep. And which that was a hundred percent penalty, yep. meaning that whatever you paid and you can't go, you lose all of that money. So in that instance, you are not due any money because you did not insure your trip. It's not a fun position to be in. And thank God that they had you as their agent mm -hmm. fighting because I feel like if they didn't have you... They would never recruit. Yeah, they would have never, ever got their money back. Mm -mm. They wouldn't have got it. And that was only because of the relationships that I have on the inside. Right. It's That's not the norm. Yeah. So we say you pay too much for a cruise to not insure it. Yep. The 11 mistake you want to avoid as a first-time Carnival cruiser is knowing what you can... And cannot bring on board. <laughs> and don't question why you can't bring it. You just right. can't. <laughs> it's certain things that cruise ships do not allow you to bring. Right. So number one is an iron. <laughs> um, we went to bat with people on irons. Like, why can't I bring my iron? Because they said so. Because it <laughs> is a fire hazard. Yes. You cannot bring a steamer because that is a fire hazard. So anything that has a heating element, you are not allowed to bring it on the trip. You can't bring hookah. You can't bring drugs. Uh, Carnival <laughs> actually has an extensive list of they everything do. that you cannot bring. So we will link that down in the description. And also, they will have everything that you are able to bring. Right. Um, with the iron situation, because we know that right there touches a <laughs> touches a nerve for some people. Yes. Get you some uh, downy wrinkle release. wrinkle release. That stuff is awesome, y'all. It uh, yeah, I don't know how it. it works, 
but it gets the wrinkles out enough so you don't have to walk around looking crazy yeah. and wrinkle clothes while you're on the trip. So, yes, please check out that list after you finish watching this video. And also, let me add to this, because when y'all heard heating element, I already heard y'all say, my, high, my flat iron, my curling iron, my blow dryer, <laughs> that is okay. The ele- I guess the wattage in it is not high enough to create any kind of hazard on board. You can bring those. Calm down. I felt it. <laughs> the 12th mistake to avoid is not downloading the Carnival Hub app. Yes. Baby, once <laughs> you get on board, that app is everything to you. It is where you're able to do your check-ins for your dining. It is yep. able it's where you'll be able to see what's going on on the ship. Yep. Now, mind you, you can download it now, but it is no good to you until you get on the ship. Right. At this moment, it's nothing more than a countdown clock. That makes you excited about your upcoming cruise. It is a dead app until you get on board. Once it gets on board, you get on board, then it comes alive. So basically download it now. Yes, make now, sure that right you can now. that you can get into it, that it's available. Because once you get on board, it's nearly impossible to get that app to download for some strange and reason. How do we know that? Because your did boy it. did it. <laughs> why does he? I didn't understand why he just took the app off his phone, but he did. Yep. And then the entire trip. He had to rely on my phone yep. in, in order to do anything, view menus, because everything is QR code driven now. And now you can, you, if you forget, you can go down to guest services and they can help you out. But nobody but who wants don't want, to do that? Nobody don't want to do that while you're on a cruise, because every every minute that you not spend enjoying your cruise, I feel like you're losing money. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I'm just saying. The 13th mistake you want to avoid as a first-time Carnival cruiser is... Please do not fly in the day of your cruise. My God. <laughs> uh, we had a story last year where a couple came in. Uh, they came in the day before. Thankfully. But what happened was they had bought a brand new truck. And their brand new truck broke down on them while they were on their way to the cruise port. We yeah. say always book. Come in the day before because you never know what can happen. Right. Also, coming in the day of, I'm telling you, you're going to have stress. Stress. And then you're going to have to recoup your energy because you've been flying all day, driving all day. Yep. Now you got to get on the ship, get yourself ready. So most people that come in the day, the day of the cruise... They sleep most of the time. They are. Because they're so tired. So it is so much easier to come in the day before, the day the day before, so you can rest up mm-hmm. at the hotel and then get on the ship fresh so you can and hit the ground the running when you get on there. That part. All right. The fourteenth mistake to avoid is this. This is your very first carnival cruise, right? Do not take the chance in booking an excursion on your own with an outside vendor. I say and I preach this, make sure that you book your excursions with the cruise line, especially when you are newbie to the game. Yes. Why? Yes, they are more expensive. But one, they give you the guarantee that you will get to and you will get from and that ship is not going to leave you. For instance, let me give you an example. And we have cruised to Freeport many, 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 many many times. times. Thank God that we did this um, excursion through the cruise line because we went to go visit and do the swimming with the dolphins. Mm -hmm. A storm broke out out of nowhere. And when I tell you we got stuck in the lagoon area where we were for probably a couple of hours to the point where we were the last people to board the ship (laughs) to (laughs) to leave from Freeport. But guess what? The crews had to wait for us to get there because they knew that we were on a cruise line vetted excursion. And the guarantee is we can't leave them as long as they with our people. Right. If that would have happened and you were on your own. On a third party one. You would have been trying to find your way back to the United States. Yeah. If you don't have a passport, that just makes it even Even more difficult. (laughs) So until you get comfortable and you really know what you're doing, no, it is not a money grab that the cruise line is doing. It's for your safety and it is for the let's not and your peace of mind. And your peace of mind. Yes. Because we don't need you left behind. Nah. All right, the 15th mistake you want to avoid is Do not drink (laughs) the expensive waters in the room. This is what you can do. Because I know you as a first-timer, you have no clue about these waters. But 
We know about these waters. <laughs> We've been the victims room. of the water. Yes. What you want to do is you want to pre-purchase your waters before you get on the ship. Mm -hmm. um, Carnival actually offers a 12-pack. And it goes for nine ninety five. Yes, that that is expensive for t a twelve bottles of water that, that you, you get, get from the Dollar Tree. <laughs> yeah, that you get stored now for like three, four, five dollars. But that's the way to go versus doing the water in the room. Because I think the last time I checked, it was either five ninety five, seven ninety five, for or something a liter. Like that. So it's <laughs> much cheaper to buy the pre to pre buy the waters before you get on the ship for the nine ninety five. Agreed. The sixteenth mistake to avoid on your first cruise is this. Not understanding how cruise spending works. I know that this sign and sale card, a sale and sign card, confuses the heck out of everybody. Yeah, we dude. teach this day in and day out. I'm a travel agent. I explain this day in, day out. So let me explain how cruise spending works. It's cashless. Yes. What do you mean, Lynette, is cashless? What I mean is... They give you a card once you get on board. It's going to be outside of your cabin door, usually hung in the little mailbox or on a little slide. It's, it's going to be at your door. Before getting on the cruise, maybe a week, like 14 days before you get on your cruise, you have to attest how you want to set up the spending on said card. Right. Because this card is the only thing that you can use to do purchases on board. Y'all follow me? You follow me? So during the check-in process, which is a couple of weeks, like I said, ahead of your cruise, you can say, hey, link this credit card to that card. And this credit card guarantees the spending that I'm going to do when I tap this card on board for my onboard spending. Yes. But if I don't want to use a card, I can attest that, hey, I'm going to bring cash. And what happens? We can't take your cash through the computer. Right. <laughs> so bring your cash to you, with you once you get on the ship. You can either go to guest services, mm -hmm. deposit that cash. That cash will guarantee <clears throat> that card. Yes. Or you can use one of their kiosk machines. And just like you would if you're trying to make a deposit at an ATM machine, go ahead, make your deposit. It will link to your card. I mean, of course, you got to put a few credentials in there so they know which card to right. link that cash to. And that's how onboard spending works. Nowhere on the ship will accept your hard-earned paper cash but the casino. casino. The casino would definitely take your cash in those machines. But if you were to say, oh, I want to go to the bar and get a drink, they're not going to say... Oh, you know, here's this 10. Let's go ahead and try. Mm -mm. No, you have to do everything on that, that sign a sale. card. They, that's why we say cruising is a cashless system. And then also you can give cash tips. So you, you can, can give cash do tips. Do that as well. Also, we recommend you not attach your debit card mm -hmm. to your sign and sale because the cruise line always put holes on your card as you continue to spend on your card to make sure that the money that you are spending on the card is available. It's available. We've had countless stories that when people get off the cruise because of those holes, those holes are still on their account. People having hundreds of dollars that they don't have access to because the cruise line have that on hold through your bank. So that's why we recommend doing a uh, credit card, or cash so you don't have to worry about that stress when you get off the ship. The 17th <laughs> thing you want to avoid as a first time cruiser, and many people are making this mistake yep. as of right now, the days of booking a cruise at the last minute and getting a cheap deal is over. <laughs> they are over. <laughs> so we highly recommend that you book your cruise out. So we recommend anywhere a from year. 12 to 24 months. That's when you get, in our opinion, the, the better deal. Because as you get closer to the sailing, those prices sometimes double and triple in price. The 18th mistake to avoid is Ooh. not putting yeah. your phone in airplane mode. My, 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 my. I know. <laughs> now, listen to me. Listen to me good. If you're used to getting on a flight, you should be used to putting your phone in airplane mode mode right listen when you get on a cruise there is nothing different and i know you're probably saying wait one second i gotta not use my phone the way that i use it on land yeah that's, that's exactly correct. what i'm saying that's correct so if you have the questions of whether or not hey i have t-mobile or at&t and they have a uh international package or they have a c package 
Call them and ask them exactly what it is that you can do with that package. Right. Some packages may allow you to roam the entire time that you are out at sea. Some of them will only take and, and make that available for you once you get off the ship. So right. make sure that you know what your cell phone coverage is if you have those packages. But in a nutshell, put that thing in airplane mode because what it's trying to do the entire time you're at sea is trying to find a signal. Yep. And it's going to roam and roam and roam. And we have seen and heard people say they have had roaming charges upwards of a couple of thousands of dollars. Yeah, man. And yeah. here's the thing. Oh. Your cell phone company don't give a darn about nope. you explaining it away. You yeah. should put it on airplane Made mode. a charge for all that and didn't even get a chance to make a phone call. You ain't even talking about it. <laughs> So, yeah, yep. please don't forget to do that. And make sure you tell your children, too, because there's yes. been instances where the parents have done it and the children just could not break away from their little friends. And they had their phone in roaming and they ran their parents bill up. Yeah. So we highly recommend that you do it just before you get on the cruise or as soon as you get on the cruise. Right at sail away. Yeah. Right at sail away. Bop, pop it on there. Yep. To say the world doesn't exist anymore. And matter of fact, if you have downloaded the Countable Hub app, within the Countable Hub app at the bottom, it's going to say, yeah, put your phone in airplane mode. So mm -hmm. even Countable is trying to protect you. All right. The 19th um, mistake that you want to avoid uh, as a first time Countable cruiser is that when you get off the ship on disembarkation day, mm. please check and double check the safe. We've heard countless yes, stories God. of people leaving cockies. License, rings. passports, rings, anything valuable in there, and they get off the ship and they forget. Mm -hmm. So please double check to make sure that you didn't forget anything because on disembarkation day, sometimes you can be in a hurry because mm -hmm. you're ready to hurry up and get off the ship so you can get back home, even though you done had a good time. So we hate for you to have a phenomenal time and be like, yeah, it like it. that. Where's my passport? Where's my license? Oh, shoot, I left it in on the, the safe. Ship. So mm -hmm. please. Double check that safe before you get off. Get out of your yes. off the, get out of your cabin. Mistake number twenty to avoid on your cruise. Please <laughs> do not come back to your port of call late. Yes. Well, what is the port of call? The port of call is, for instance, whatever destinations you selected to go on on your cruise. Nassau, Bahamas, Freeport, Bahamas, Cozumel, Mexico, Ocho Rios, Jamaica. Yes. If they said be back at four p.m. That does not mean 405. Nope. That does not mean 359. Because at 359, they could be pulling that, that gate up and you're left behind. What I, well, This is what I tell people. There are a few things that just don't wait for you. Right. <laughs> a plane, yep. <laughs> a cruise ship, and death. <laughs> All of them, regardless if you're ready or not, going to hit you when it's going to hit you. Yep. And a cruise ship will blow the horn at you seeing you walking down the pier because they told you to be back on time. This is also true for getting on the ship. If the last boarding time is 3 o'clock and all aboard is at 4 o'clock and you show up at 4 one Yep. Gangway's up. They're going to they gonna wave at you, blow the horn, yep. and you're going to hear down, down, blah, and down, down, do you down. The, the people on the ship are going to be waving at you, too, and yeah. laughing and recording you. And recording <laughs> and putting you on YouTube. Uh, TikTok, Instagram. So that's why we recommend that you always start make your way back to an hour or two before it's time. At least an hour. Yeah, at least. And then also make sure the that your phone time. is on ship time because... Um, in your phone, all phones are different that you got to put the settings where it'll change time zones with you. Mm -hmm. So if it's if your phone does that, you want to make sure that you turn that off so you can stay on the ship time. And if you are afraid of that, just get yourself an analog watch um, and mm. that'll work because that, that don't change with the that time. Don't change. The time is the time. The time <laughs> is the time. Mistake number 21 that you want to avoid as a first time count of a cruiser if you have any type of medical needs, like a CPAP or something to that nature, please let your travel agent know or Carnival mm -hmm. know so that way they can accommodate you before you get on the ship. Also, within that, 
uh, we're not asking you what it is, you, like what your medical history is, because we just want to be nosy and know your right. business. It's because the ADA department has things in place to help you along the way while you're on your cruise. If you're bringing a CPAP, then they can say, hey, we have the extensions. Hey, you want the distilled water? We'll be able to accommodate you and, and so you can pre-purchase the distilled water. If you are a person that has allergies to anything, shellfish, nuts, let your travel agent know or let Carnival know yes. so that these things can be no made known so that you can have a safe voyage. Because the last thing we need to do is you get on board and God forbid you have some kind of medical emergency happen or a medical mishap and no one has any documentation of what your history may be. So make sure that you tell us and be very transparent. Like, yes, right. I'm a I'm a diabetic. Yes, I'm a type one diabetic. I need a thing to put my needles in. I need a little cooler. These are the things that your travel agent and or Carnival needs to know so that the ADA department can help better serve you. And also, I thought about this mistake as well. When you are coming to the port, please don't put your CPAP machine in your check luggage. Any of your medical equipment. Yeah, any of it. Please put that in your carry on uh, because we don't want to you don't want to make that mistake and get that lost. No, yes. No, nah. Or damaged. Right. If you have enjoyed this video, you want to check out this video. Mm -hmm. 26 Carnival Cruise Tips for First Time Carnival Cruisers to help you feel more confident and prepared on your first cruise. Mm -hmm. And we're going to catch you in the next video. Peace.